Hey there guys, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and this is me very quickly telling you guys that I'm very sorry for the delay of this video. You know, when me and my guests Kaden and Kevin filmed this movie news video, we filmed it live. Um, we had a couple of watchers, so thank you to those that watched this movie news video live. But apparently during the filming there were static issues like... I, I had very static buzzing sounds in the background, like literally starting when we talk about Insidious Chapter 4. So I had to do a certain things to fix starting at that point where we talk about Insidious Chapter 4. You're going to know what that is, but yeah, this is unfortunately not my best video. But you know what? I'm still pulling through because my guests Kaden and Kevin committed to doing this movie news video with me and I wasn't going to give up on uploading this video. So yes, you guys, it's not my best movie news video due to technical difficulties, but I just still want to say hopefully you guys find this video passable. That's all I'm going to say. So yes, you guys, thank you as always for supporting my channel and hopefully you enjoy the show. It's Hello, me. everybody. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, where we talk about movie news and a little bit of TV news towards the end, but it is mainly movie news. And, you know, just like with pretty much the first episode of my rebooted segment, I guess you could say, I am here with a couple of guests. This time it is with Kevin Fall. Yeah, what's up, guys? It's Kevin. Of course, uh, if you guys see my channel, I do movie reviews, TV reviews. Uh, sometimes I'll do movie previews. Usually with this one, who is now left, but um, yeah. And we have Mr. Caden Laplante, aka Big Lazy and Red. Hi. In yellow today. Um. <laughs> Hi guys, I am still a boy. Um, yeah. Um, nice, very powerful speech. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I got you. That's not it. It is. Breaking news! Breaking news! Breaking news! Breaking, breaking news. news! Breaking movie news! All right. The first movie news we're going to be oh, talking yeah. about is the fact that Transformers 5 now officially has a title. And the title of Transformers 5 is going to be Transformers The Last Night. So yeah, mm -hmm. it just says, I'm reading the article from comicbook.com, and it just says, The Last Night title is likely a reference to the Knights of Cybertron, which were alluded in the most recent yep. Transformers installment, Age of Extinction. And yeah, that's basically all it's we need to know extinct. about this. It's, it's, it's a lie, guys. The Age of Extinction, The Last Night. I'm seeing like a pattern here, but... Uh... Yeah. Okay. So, um, my thoughts on the title. I don't have like too much knowledge when it comes to Transformers, but I, kn I do remember the fourth movie, which I really... Despise, so I've only seen it once, but I do remember them having like talks about the Knights of Cybertron. So it's it's like it makes sense for the title to be titled The Last Night. I mean, I guess it sounds cool. I guess it makes sense considering uh, the mentions of them in the Age of Extinction. But yeah, that's all I gotta really say for this one. Uh, Kevin, how do you feel about the Transformers Five title? All right, I haven't even seen the fourth one because I don't honestly give a fuck, really. But Good. I know the like, is Michael Bay involved? Is he still doing it? Yeah, yeah he's doing yes, it. he is still involved. Fuck my life, seriously. Um, <laughs> here's the thing: if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is broken. It should have ended with the fourth one. It's really stupid that they're still continuing this. I don't know why they're continuing this. I don't really have an opinion on it. Isabel Moner is a very talented actress. She could be doing a lot of really good stuff. She continues to want to do shitty stuff, and yeah. All right. Oh, and by the way, hello, Tevya Smoka and G. Kobe P. Hello. Thank you very much for watching this. All right, Kaden, your thoughts on the Transformers 5 title, and I guess just Transformers 5 in general. Okay, I mean, I know, like, kind of about this, like you said, like, I knew about, like, how it would be, like, the Knights of, like, Cybertron, right? Yeah. Something like that. And, I mean, 
the teaser with like Opt- Optimus Prime, like kind of like that warfare kind of paint going on, kind of you know, I guess implies things again. I don't really know that much about Transformers. I'm just like I'm taking what I've said, and you know, I'm just I'm just speaking out of my ass right now. But personally, I have thought that the last two Transformers movies uh, were terrible. Am I looking forward to this one? Yes, and let me explain why. Because it seems like they're trying to do something different. Of what mm. I've looked up about this, I can't yeah. remember. I can't remember most of it honestly because I kind of looked it up quickly. What I read, it seems like they actually are trying to do something different, which I know kind of sounds weird. So maybe that's how I'm kind of looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I also liked the title of the last night. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, explosions, explosions, making my eardrums bleed. Um, so that's cool. And, uh, yeah, that's all I really like, have to say. They tried to do something different with the fourth one. Did not work, so how do we know this The only is thing work? that's different about that movie is that Shia LaBeouf's in, is in it. That's, that's the only thing. Yeah, I haven't even seen the fourth one. I don't really plan on Good, seeing it. I saw it in theaters, and my whole family thought it was a masterpiece. Yeah, I know. I remember. <laughs> remember. I remember you saw, like, all four, and then did, like, reviews, and you, like, raged about, like, the third one. You're like, I hate this movie. I hate it. It was so funny. Um, yeah. And then, like, for me personally, I mean, we'll see what happens when we get other details. I don't really have an opinion on this. I think this just, they need to, if this, okay, here's the thing. If this movie does not work, just end it because it's not working. It's not worth it. Transformers, just no. keep it as a cartoon. Just And I know they're not going to because Michael Bay is greedy and he wants money when he doesn't really need it. But, you know. Well, Kevin, they've already announced that there's going to be a Bumblebee spinoff in, like, I believe, like, two more Transformers movies? Am I correct? Or, like, one more? Well, I will determine if I boycott it or not, so... Yeah. Jacoby says Mark Wahlberg was the only good thing Transformers 4. Um, he, he honestly was one of my pauses with Transformers 4. I actually like Mark Wahlberg in the fourth film. I do know some people that enjoyed the fourth, and if you enjoyed the fourth, that's cool. You know, I will subjective. say, I like some things about the third, like the battle at the end I think is kind of cool, even though yeah. it's long as shit, yeah. I think it's kind of cool, but other than that, like I like the first one obviously, the first one's pretty good, second one, I don't really remember, but I remember it wasn't too bad, or it was it was not great, but it wasn't terrible, uh, the third one just, that girl could not act for shit, they had that move, that article that said there's going to be a movie about ex- uh, explosions falling in love, I'd rather see that than Transformers 5 anyway. <laughs> I remember that. The Onion movie, I, all... I, I totally see that, like, I'm, if you wanted a movie about two explosions falling in love, I'm sold, I'm sold, let's do it, but uh, Transformers 5, yeah, I just, I, I don't have an opinion, I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> This is how I see the explosions. It's just all like, you want to make love, baby? <laughs> of course, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Probably something like that, yeah. Now, next up, we're going to be talking about, yep, this certain horror franchise that has gained a fourth installment in Sidious Chapter 4. Yeah, Yay! we all... We all were hoping and say this would be one of those rare times where a horror movie, a horror franchise stays a trilogy, right? Well, nope. It looks like it's not anymore. The movie is set to um, be released on October of 2017. So yeah, well, I was hoping this would just be a trilogy because my opinion is that. So yeah, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Well, yeah, we're not going to go with that staticky bullshit. It's just going to be, I guess, in the thought bubble, whatever. Well, anyways, my thoughts on Insidious Chapter 4. I don't think Insidious Chapter 4 is very necessary. I was just hoping this would be a horror franchise that would just stay a trilogy. But, you know, it doesn't stay a trilogy. So, you know, the movie could be good. It could be a good movie. You know, I'm not mad that it's happening, but it is a bummer that Insidious didn't just stay a trilogy because I really enjoyed the first two Insidious movies. The first two were good. Third one was okay, but at that point on, that's when I'm all like, yeah, it's definitely time to just stop because you could tell by the time I hit the third film, it was already starting to run out of steam. You know, it was entertaining. It was decent for what it was, but... You know, it was definitely time to end the trilogy from there. And now that I see there's a fourth one happening, yeah, I'm not too happy about that. But, 
we're just gonna see how it goes but yeah in Sea of Chapter 4 it does release on October 2017 so I guess I'll have to wait and see until then how that goes here's my thing uh, I've really liked all three Insidious. I think the second one probably is the weakest. I actually really like the third one, and I think the third one was a good conclusion. Like, it told the beginning of the story. It showed, um, I can't remember her name right now, but, uh, the, the woman, I can't think of her name right now. I think she was really great in all three movies. She was really good in all three of them. Um, I like what they did with her in all three of the movies. Um, I thought that, I remember I thought the third one was gonna be shit, and I actually really enjoyed the third one. I thought it was a really nice, emotional story that wasn't actually a whole Horror movie. It was it was scary at points, but it was really more of a drama than anything. Here's the thing with chapter four. I mean, if the same people that did the first three are a part of this, then I'm totally on board because I feel like they found something that they just they want to tell one last story. All right, by all means do that. But make this the last one. If you're gonna do one more, make it the last one. I don't want like this to become like Saw, where you have a bunch of unnecessary movies and they just don't really. They're just there for money because Insidious was never a series that was made to make money. I mean, you guys remember the first Insidious? It was a small ass movie. Like it was only in certain places and. A lot of people didn't get to see that movie, and then they heard about it, and then it became this huge thing, really, and that's when Blumhouse really blew up, just like Paranormal Activity was very small. I don't want this to become like Paranormal Activity, because Paranormal Activity, those movies are, the first three are great movies. I love all three of the first, I love all three, honestly. I can watch all three of them um, anytime they're on. I definitely watch them. All three are really great stories, I think. And then the fourth one's really when that started to decline. I'm worried Insidious is going to go through that same thing. Insidious, though, is is a much more grounded story, and it's not a found footage movie, so there's not nearly as much you can do with that as you could do with the Paranormal Activity series. So, yeah, I'm, I'm quite concerned. I don't really see that happening. Insidious Chapter 4, we'll see what happens. I think this is really unnecessary. I'm going to say it's like Toy Story 4, where maybe they saw something that we just didn't, and hopefully it's the same people, because I swear to God, if it's different writers, I'm just, I'm, I'm not, I don't care. I've only seen the first one, honestly. Okay. But let me say this. It's, I know what happens in the second and the third one. I've heard what happens. And honestly, in my opinion, I agree with you guys. I think it's pointless. Um, you guys already said what I have to say. Can I have not, I've only seen the first one, so I don't really have a lot to add to this. But I do definitely agree with you guys, definitely. Mm hmm Okay, so the next news headline we're going to be talking about is the fact that Warner Brothers is indeed going to be moving forward with a Harley Quinn movie starring, of course, Margot Robbie. Oh, man, that static is so unbearable to watch, uh, listen to. Uh, I'm really sorry, you guys. You only have to put up with my static, shitty sound when I'm reading the news headline. But otherwise, don't worry, you can still hear me in decent form um, in this thought bubble, I guess. So, okay. My thoughts on this is that I'm actually down for a Harley Quinn solo movie. I think that's really awesome. Yes, Suicide Squad hasn't come out yet. And yes, it is honestly a little too early to even announce a Harley Quinn movie because we still have to see how Suicide Squad is going to go. But, I mean, for me, I'm totally down for a Harley Quinn movie because... I know we haven't seen reviews for Suicide Squad yet as this video is being filmed, but I have a feeling that Harley Quinn will definitely be one of those characters that everyone talks about walking out of Suicide Squad. That's just my own gut feeling. So I could already see Harley Quinn working for the audience because of how well Margot Robbie is doing. Like, just seeing the trailers makes me already confident that Margot Robbie or Margot Robbie is going to do really great as Harley Quinn. Yes, it's a little bit too early and the points that Kevin and Kaden are going to make, I agree with what they say about the movie, but personally I am already down for a solo Harley Quinn movie. So yeah, you know, bring me a Harley Quinn movie. I'm totally down for that. How about right. you, Kevin? Here's my here's my thing. I'm a bit worried about Suicide Squad, definitely, just because of things I've heard. I heard it's really messy. Without a doubt, though, Harley Quinn's going to be one of the highlights of those movies. And already, I know Margot Robbie can carry a movie. I mean, it's about... I don't think she's really had a movie where she's the star. She's been the co-star or the female lead, but never her own movie. So I think it's about time that we do this, really. I mean, she looks amazing in this role. The way she's transformed herself really shows her range, things like that. Yes, I'm all for a Harley Quinn movie. If there's any movie I could think of... 
for them to do Suicide Squad off of and do a spin off of, it would be Harley Quinn without a doubt, even though I haven't seen that character fully. From what I've seen, I've loved everything I've seen of her. I think, uh, like I said, I'm worried about the movie just because of the way Batman v Superman turned out and the way DC movies have turned out thus far that are not the Christopher Nolan trilogy. Um, and also because I know recently uh, they just – DC just like ch – the entire – all of Warner Brothers just changed like their entire like movie going, like the people that work for them. So like other people are working in other places, things like that. So I'm a bit worried about that as well. But overall, I'm looking forward to this. I'm totally on board with a Harley Quinn solo movie. Um and yeah, I think it's gonna be really cool. And I think this is kind of like they're trying they're clearly trying to do what they are with like Avengers, things like that, where they're giving them their own solo movies. So I think this could really show like I think really I mean these these big movies that they're doing, yes, I do and I do agree that people that they are going a bit too big. So something a bit smaller with Harley Quinn, yeah, I'm totally down for. It. I think it's a good idea, and I think it'll really show um if this DC movie universe is really gonna work. Yeah. All right, um, Kena, your opinion on a Harley Quinn movie? Uh, first, I think it's a stupid decision because, first of all, the movie hasn't even come out yet. And if one of our executives are really, really, you know, confident in this movie that they were for Batman v Superman, they gave it a standing ovation. Apparently, I really do think that this is a bad move because they, I think, this should wait for an audience reaction because this movie oh, yeah. does look kind of, like, different than, like, anything, like, DC has done in, like, a very long time. And, personally, I think it's a dumb move. I think this should wait, and I think, like, they're really only doing this because of the, uh, you know, like, the how much, you know, love and you know, how much of a fan base Harley Quinn, you know, um, Margot Robbie uh, already has as Harley Quinn. And, honestly, I think they should just wait and not rush it and stuff like that. They're already doing the sequel. I don't do that in business, just so you can make more and more movies. Um, and um, yeah, and I this is I guess one of those secret projects they were working on. And personally, I think it's a terrible idea, and that's all I have to say. Would I like would I like to see Harley Quinn spin off? Yes. And uh, that's uh, really. Wanna, cool. you just want to wait until like Suicide Squad comes out. Yeah, yeah. because imagine if everyone said Suicide Squad is the worst movie ever, and they already like halfway through production of Harley of this Harley Quinn spin off. Yeah, that's a good point, and I know the chat box with G. Kobe and Tevia are in agreement. Like, it's way too early to have one. As of May 19, 2016, because that is when we're filming this, it said that Daniel Craig has actually turned down £68 million, pounds, $99 million American language, um, to do two more James Bond films. So... Obviously, Daniel Craig is now officially done. No more with him. My thoughts on this is that, um, you know, I respect Daniel Craig's decision. You know, if he doesn't want to be James Bond, it's his own decision. Um, but, man, that's a lot of money that he was offered just to be James Bond for two more films. I know he signed a contract to do five films, but I guess they wanted to reach him to do six films. But knowing Daniel Craig, not really interested in the role anymore, you know... That, that's over and done with. And honestly, it makes sense because I feel like Spectre, which, by the way, I actually really enjoyed. I know that's a movie either people really enjoyed or didn't. I really enjoyed the movie personally. I had a blast with it. And I thought Spectre was actually... It felt like, honestly, a conclusion. Like, it, like even though it wasn't intentional for the filmmakers to make it the last movie because that wasn't the intention at all. They were planning to go five movies. But even with that, it still felt like a conclusion. And think about it. Spectre tied in to all of the events that happened in Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, and Skyfall. It was just a nice way to just put everything in a nice bow, like in a nice completed bow, if that makes any sense. And especially how Spectre ended, I thought it made sense. Like, it definitely felt like uh, the conclusion so because of that, I'm okay with Spectre being Daniel Craig's last movie because of just how the movie ended. It felt like the right way to conclude the Daniel Craig James Bond movies. And Daniel Craig himself, you know, I'm going to miss him playing James Bond. But if the guy really doesn't want to do it anymore, you know what? Why force him? It's his own decision. He could do whatever he wants with his career. Um, you know, he, he should have made the comments like he would rather kill himself than to play James Bond again. That's like, come on, Daniel Craig. But really, I respect the guy's decision of not wanting to play James Bond anymore. So honestly, I am okay with it. But now I look forward to seeing who will be the next James Bond.
Um, well, first of all, I honestly really think it's a good thing that Daniel Craig opted out because, first of all, I, I thought Spectre was going to be the last one he did anyway. I didn't know that he had two other plans. I knew he had one other plan. I didn't know he had two others planned. It's really a lot for someone to go beyond a decade and play that character. I believe he started in, like, 2006, and yeah. if we're talking two more. He could be playing this character till like, 2020, and it's clear he wants to move on to other things. I mean, he really is a great... From what I've seen, he's a great James Bond. Now, I haven't seen any of his movies. I'm going to watch him over the summer, definitely, because I want to I want to watch... Um, I want to watch... I especially get to Spectre, because I didn't get to watch Spectre last year. I was going to watch him last year just to get a chance to... Um, my real thing is I, I do think it's a good thing that he's opted out because it's time to get a new one. It's time to see really what others can do. Not that Daniel Craig is bad. It's just it's really asking a lot for someone to devote like 10 years of their life to play the same character. I mean, sometimes it works really well. Like look at Ro look at what Robert Downey Jr. has done. He's played that character for like five or six years, and he's still killing it. Um, but – when you're doing it for more than a decade, yeah, it, it can be a lot. And I think it's good that he's opted out. I mean, especially because I heard they kind of treated him like shit, honestly. Like, I heard they were really – like, he himself really did not want to play James Bond anymore. He just was kind of sick of it. And I can understand that. I mean, it's a lot. you got to do all these stunts. you got to do this same role. It can really get annoying after a while. It's like, all right, guys, I really just want to do something else. Daniel Craig, he's made other things, but he really hasn't been able to do a lot because of the fact of James Bond. It's it's very time consuming, and I feel like he's gonna go on to do something that's not as time consuming. Maybe something that's just a little bit smaller, which I think is the right thing for him to do. Um, maybe this will open up to like Idris Elba, because I know people have said Idris Elba is a possibility, things like that. Uh, so we'll really, I'm. I, I think talks of who the new James Bond is, it's not something we should talk about right now. It's more of the fact of Daniel Craig's decision. I think it was a good one because I feel like if he played another James Bond, especially because, like you guys said, Spectre is a good ending for the character, I feel like it'd just be stretching it out too far. I mean, Piers Brosnan, I know the main issue with him is that... Uh, it, it went on too long, you know, it went on too long, it got, they got way too silly and things like that, and I feel like Daniel Craig, it's good that he opted out now, while the series is still really great, move on to another one, see what they can do, and that's how I feel about it, but what are your thoughts, uh, Mr. Yellow, Spongebob? <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. Um, here's the thing. I don't blame him, because it was kind of obvious that they kind of tore him back just because uh, he helped him bug into the billion dollar club and make a lot of money. Um, but, you know, I don't blame him because, you know, he was doing all these stunts and he's had so many injuries while doing it. And, you know, it's just not fun anymore. And it's more business now, I guess. And that's really all I have to say. You guys have really said everything else. But I think the big thing is that. It was really just like a business thing, you know, they kind of, if, you know, he, again, like I said, made a Skyfall going to the Billion Dollar Club, and that's a big deal, you know, he is the, basically the most popular James Bond um, of all time now, and I do agree that Spectre was a good ending to his character, would I like to see Jenner Craig return for one movie, yes, um, again, there was, like, a contract for him to do one more movie, I don't know if they were able to do something with that, I heard they were going to do something with that, but... Doesn't look like they're gonna really do anything with it anymore. Yeah, whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, that's honestly all I have to say. Um, and I, I don't blame him. And what I, again, like I said, I would like to see another movie of him. But you know, maybe it's time for a new James Bond. Yeah. By the way, um, Jacoby and Tevia in the chat room are making some good suggestions. Um, Jacoby said that Tom Hiddleston would make a good James Bond. Yeah, a lot of people and, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then Tevia Smoker said Henry Cavill, in which after I saw the match from Uncle, I could definitely see him as James Bond, to be honest. And now, you guys, we're going to be moving on to a little something suggested by Kevin Falk. We're going to actually be talking about some... TV news to end this off. We'll talk about ABC, and then Kevin just brought up the CW. Um, Kevin, you have that article, so that way you can read the article, right? I'm not as upset as you guys may expect, because a lot of these shows, it was kind of like, yeah, I think it was time to end. But there's one thing that I'm definitely not happy about. Tony will give you the list in a second, but... um. 
let me just get into it because for me, things like Gallivant and Agent Carter, which I know were uh, canceled, those things I figured would be canceled. Gallivant, I don't know what else they could do. It was such a good season. Keep it while it's still great. I feel like if they be, be going beyond this season, it'd be stretching it out too far. Yes, they had some sort of like if the show were to get picked up again, we could be doing this, but it really did end. Like this is really a good conclusive ending for the show. Um, there's that. As far as Agent Carter, no, the, I, 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 a lot of people think the season was a bust. I personally think the season was just as great as season one. Um, and there were some things the season one did that this season did even better than season one. But yeah, really from here, where can we go beyond this? And I've said this before. I know Haley Atwell has done other stuff in like the UK, but as far as the US, she is really only known for for Peggy Carter, and she's been playing this character for like five or six years, and. I think it's time to retire the character. The character was just uh, some. Well, I'm not gonna say something happens in Civil War. But I know Haley Owl's got a new show as well, so there's that, and that I'm not as upset about. But now, Tony, give us the full list. <clears throat> All right, then. Okay, you don't want to hear my shitty, staticky, buzzy noise, so I'm gonna go ahead and just read the list from here. All right. So these are the shows that Fox and ABC has canceled. Okay. So Agent Carter. Border Town, Castle, Containment, um, uh, which, yeah, okay, that's weird. Um, the Family, CSI Cyber, Cooper Barrett's Guide to Surviving Live, I have no idea what that show is, Gallivant, Grandfather, The Grinder, Nashville, and The Muppets. Okay, so, I don't have the TV knowledge that Kevin has, because... You guys should follow Kevin's channel seriously because he does a lot of TV reviews. Like, he pretty much watches a ton of shows. Um, so he has more knowledge of TV than I do. So, Grandfathered, I've only watched a couple of episodes, and I've really enjoyed what I saw. I have to watch the rest of the series, but it is too bad to see it. But it is too bad to see it go because I think John Stamos is great. I really like Josh Peck. It's cool to see Josh Peck do a show. So I'll watch more episodes of the show definitely, but that's too bad that it's gone. Um, Agent Carter, you know, Agent Carter's canceled. That's too bad because I really enjoyed season two, honestly. And I know there's a petition going around for them to save Agent Carter. Maybe Netflix possibly having it. We'll see how that happens. It could continue on. It could be done for good. We'll just have to see. But for now, I am honestly very bummed about Agent Carter. Castle, I know, it was one of the most popular shows ever. So it's surprising to hear about it. But then I did read that a certain actress was leaving the show. So, um, so yeah, Castle, I'm surprised ABC canceled. And then all the other shows I don't really watch. Um, okay, and then The Muppets. The Muppets, I'm really bummed that got canceled because I really enjoyed The Muppets. I know it got criticisms like it's nothing like the original show. Maybe there's a little too many adult humor. And I can agree with that. That's some of my flaws with the show. I can agree that there's maybe a little too much adult humor. But I think there's enough to to where the kids can enjoy like there's enough material i think the kids can enjoy honestly and i thought really for the most part the show brought the overall spirit of the muppet characters uh so yeah it's a shame to see muppets go and um yeah i think that's all i have to say i'll go ahead and give the spotlight to kevin to now talk about this stuff with well going back to the muppets that's the one i didn't talk about here's my thing with the muppets is that I was, like, hyped out of my mind for the Muppets. If you guys remember, I reviewed every single Muppet movie in, like, September just to get myself hyped up and remember how much I love the Muppets and things like that. And this didn't really feel like the Muppets in the first half. It felt like any other, uh, you know, just regular mockumentary. I think that really was the problem is that you didn't have that special Muppet sort of, like, quirk to it. It really wasn't there. Like, they were acting way too normal, things like that. The problem was the show got really good when it came back. When it came back in, like, February, it was actually getting really good. Like, they started to realize what was working, what wasn't. The problem was all their viewership was gone completely because everyone had left after the first half of the season because they were just like, what the fuck happened to my childhood? And I don't think the show's nearly as bad as everyone's been saying. Yes, there were a lot of jokes that I think they, are, they did way too much of. I think they focused way too much on adult humor and adult jokes and trying to make the characters more adult and how do we make the show more raunchy, things like that. I think they yeah. focused way too much on that. The second half, they clearly tried to make a lot better. Like, they didn't have 
Piggy and Kermit constantly at each other's throats, which, let's face it, Kermit was kind of an asshole in the beginning of the, of the season. He really was. I mean, he was constantly getting mad. I think one of the best changes they did is go, have them go on that vacation, and then they come back, and Kermit's like found this new sense of confidence, and he's a lot more happy and things like that, because that's the Kermit Frog we know. We don't need this like distressed Kermit the Frog that's like an asshole 24-7. Cause that, Kermit that, the is, frog, that is one of my flaws, definitely, that yeah. he was a little bit out of character. Yeah, he really was. He was an asshole. He basically was his way or no way at all. And, like, that's not Kermit. That's just any other asshole on TV. And I think that really is what the problem is, that a lot of the characters, they didn't act in character. They acted how they did for this show, but they didn't act in character. A lot of the things they tried the first half didn't work, like Denise, Kermit's girlfriend, did absolutely nothing. Fozzie's girlfriend did absolutely nothing. Um, second half of the season, though, they really tried to change a lot of that. I just think it was really too late, and that really was the problem. Uh, Castle. Let's talk about Castle, though, because here's the thing with Castle. A lot of people are all upset about Castle. I know JW Universe, if you're watching this, you were really pissed about Castle and everything. Um, it really, I think, was time for the show to end, though, because, one, I heard they had shot two different endings, and really, if we think about it, this show would have continued without Beckett, and you can't have Castle without Beckett. I used to watch Castle in, like, seasons four. I, I dropped out uh, after a season just because there were other things on TV that I'd rather watch, but I used to watch Castle. Not a bad show, definitely will say. I think it was very good. I know a lot of people said it really did start to lose its steam after those two got together, and... Really, I think it was only a matter of time. A show can only go so long. You know, I think we were going on, what, almost 10 seasons, things like that. So it went, yeah. it went for a very long time. And I did see the ending of the show. It does end very satisfyingly with Castle and Beckett happily married. They have, like, two kids and everything. So it's about as happy as ending as you could get. I know my mom was uh, pretty pissed about the family. Like, not too pissed. She watched it, though. Uh, she kind of wanted a second season, though, so there was that. Um and then as far as the other ones go, the grinder is the one that I'm really surprised about because I know the grinder was actually doing pretty well and a lot of people are actually really enjoying it. I know it didn't have much of an audience, but that to me I see more as like a Netflix show because it just is kind of too weird. Netflix I think is really for good more like quirky comedy. Like for example, Lady Dynamite premieres tonight. That is the exact that is the exact um, representation of what comedy on Netflix should be is weird different stuff that normally wouldn't be on regular TV. I think Netflix perfectly does that stuff, um, and I think that's really... Like, the Muppets, I know they've already said they might get picked up to uh, Netflix, things like that. So I think a lot of these shows, it really was only a matter of time. Like I said, Gallup and Agent Carter, I'm not too upset about because... One, I didn't think those two get renewed in the first place last season. At least they got another season, and Gallivant completely improved their show this season and showed really what they could do. But again, those two are meant to be event series, and this is what I fear with Wayward Pines. Wayward Pines got a second season, which I heard sucks. Like, I'm watching it next, year, on, um, next week, but I heard that it sucks, and... This is really my fear. When you have an event series, a lot of um, producers, they get greedy. They're like, all right, this worked out really well. Viewers really liked it. Let's do a second season. Some shows shouldn't do that. So I'm glad Containment ended while it did as well because that was meant to be an event series, and I heard that wasn't good. So if, you know, if it's broken, it's broken. There's not really much you can do with it if it's an event series, really, because you know, it can't really go beyond that. So that's really how I feel about that. Uh, Kane, do you have anything to say? Honestly, no. I'm not into TV that much, as you guys know, so. All right, Kevin, so if you want to talk about the CW now, go, yeah, ahead, yeah, and read, yeah. go ahead and read away, my friend. Let's get to the big stuff with the CW. So, of course, one of the big questions was, where's Supergirl going to go? Because it just came onto the CW. I'm glad they're sticking to 8 o'clock on Mondays, because that's where it was. Um, on CBS. Yes, it didn't exactly work on CBS, and I will admit, it did feel very weird that we had all of these DC shows, and then there was Supergirl. And yes, Gotham's on Fox, but Gotham's stupid, so I don't even talk about Gotham. Uh, Supergirl, though, I'm glad that that's on the CW. My biggest concern is the way they've done this schedule, which is I think very just f very DC uh, friendly and everything else. Clearly, they don't really give a shit about. You can see because Mondays we have Supergirl at eight, Jane the Virgin at nine. Okay, that's fine. I think that works really well actually. Tuesday then we have the Flash and then No Tomorrow at nine, which the No Tomorrow is the new show with uh, Joshua Sasi from Galvin, which that alone should have told you that Galvin was getting canceled when jo when you hear that these actors have new series that are going to be coming next year. Uh, but it's about like the end of the world, things like that. Um, 
Wednesday you have Arrow, then Frequency. Thursday, Legends Tomorrow, I'm glad that's going to be full season because I think that was the main problem this season, that it wasn't a full season and Supernatural. Friday's the one that I just don't understand at all. We have the Vampire Diaries and then Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and I don't see how those two shows go together at all. Here's the problem with me. You guys, if you saw my reviews, you know that I don't really like the Vampire Diaries anymore. It's not a bad show. It just should have ended. It should have ended this season, and I'm hoping next season is the ending. And now I'm hearing rumors that it's not going to end next season, which is really pissing me off because I think it needs to end. It really does. I think they need to end it next season, and it should be a short season. I think the main problem of the season is that it was so long. It was 22 episodes. They weren't able to tell a conclusive story in 22 episodes. I think the best thing to do was to do 13 episodes next season then end it. But that's not what they're doing. They're taking their arguably their best show, the originals, which is as good as it's ever been, making that mid-season and hoping that these two shows work out for them only because of awards. That's why. And they've asked why they've done this. Awards. That's that's their main reason. The only reason they've kept Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, if you guys know, is actually because of awards. It's because Rachel Bloom won that Golden Globe. If she had not won that Golden oh, Globe, yeah. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend would be canceled right now, probably headed to Netflix, but it'd still be canceled. And it really pisses me off that you have Crazy Ex-Girlfriend after the Vampire Diaries. I mean, first of all, how do that's a terrible lineup. Those two shows don't go together at all. The Originals is mid-season. It's really dumb that that's mid-season, because that's a story that you have to have 22 episodes for. That's why season three has been so good, because we've had 22 episodes tell this great story and the Vampire Diaries just didn't work. I feel like it should be the other way around. Is the originals, um, you know, and then Crazy ex and then you can bring in the Vampire Diaries for mid-season and then end it that way. But really, the fact that it, the Vampire Diaries is going on so long and the originals is just, um, you know, mid-season... It really pisses me off because they work so hard in the originals. It's clear they don't really care about the Vampire Diaries anymore. Most of the cast has expressed that they want to leave. So I'm thinking next season's going to be the next season. CW, of course, like, we have no plans to make this the next season, but if it's the next season, whatever. Um, so there's that. I get that they're very DC right now because that's where their success is, but it just seems like they're not really focused on their other shows, and they need to be. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend's great, Jane the Virgin's great, and The Originals is great. And how do we know that these two shows, Frequency and No Tomorrow, are going to be all that great? For me, what I would have done is put one of those shows, um, you know, out in the fall and then put the other one for mid-season, which is what they did this year. They had Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and then they saved the rest for mid-season, which I would have done this year. I would have put... Probably no tomorrow, because it seems like that's the one that's going to be successful. And then keep frequency for mid-season is what I would do. And then put the originals uh, right where um, either I probably put it... Uh, maybe after Legends of Tomorrow, I could see it doing that, or even after the Vampire Diaries is what it is where it should be though, because those two just go very well together. You got the Vampire Diaries, and you got the originals. If you fucking hate the episode of the Vampire Diaries, the originals will make that better, and that's the thing. And yes, Crazy Ex Girlfriend's a great show, and I know this is kind of an unnecessary rant, but it really kind of just pisses me off that they did this and that they're not really focused on their other shows. You know, even though the shows they're making them awards, yeah, it's great to get awards, but there are people that really love the originals, and it really makes me think that the originals get canceled next year. I don't want it to. It almost got canceled this year, but luckily it didn't because everyone loves the originals and, you know, it has this great fan base and everything. But the fact that that's gone mid-season, Vampire Diaries full season, I mean, maybe the Vampire Diaries will be better next year, but that really pissed me off. As far as the other schedules go, like NBC's, um, ABC's, I'm glad that Ains of Shields go on 10, 10 o'clock. I'll definitely say that. I think that's really cool uh, because it'll make the show darker, things like that. Uh, they'll be able to show more on that. I think it's one of the problems with Ains of Shields that it's always been TV PG, and next year it'll actually be TV 14, so that's cool. Um, NBC, I don't really care as much about. Uh, CBS, MacGyver's getting canceled. I'm going to say that right now. It's on 8 o'clock Mondays. That's probably going to get canceled. Um Overall, though, I'm happy with most of the schedules. The CW one, I just don't really understand. Why put these two shows that you know not are not necessarily going to be hits? I think No Tomorrow is going to be a hit, but Frequency is the one that I'm really not sure about. And then basically give three of your shows the midseason treatment. Not just the originals, but also iZombie, which was full season this year. And then The 100, which already is a midseason show, but iZombie and The Originals were both um, midseason next year. Rain, as well, is going to be midseason. And then arguably, the show that we're most looking forward to, Riverdale, is midseason as well. So 
that really pissed me off. I think it was a really bad decision, and I think the CW really needs to get their shit together because I get that they're making a lot of money right now, but awards and money are not all that matters. Fan base matters, things like that, and they really need to focus on all their shows and not just for their shows. Well, you guys, that's all we have for movie news and TV news at the end. I hope you guys enjoyed that. But, of course, I want to thank, of course, Kevin and Caden for being here. Thank you guys for discussing movie news and TV Welcome. news with me. Welcome. I also do want to say thank you to G. Kobe, Tevya Smoka, and the amazing Mr. Hollywood for watching the movie news video that night live. Thank you to anyone that watches this video that is now already edited together. And I also want to thank Kevin Falk and Caden. You know, I already said it right now, but in static -y form, but I still want to thank them for being on. Check out their channels, you guys. They're both great YouTubers. So if you guys want to check out their channels, I'm going to leave a link to both of their channels in the description now below down below and now let's get back to my shitty static quality this is 22 tiger dude and we will always have tiger power, tiger power. no tigers allowed at the news desk no kevin's allowed yep no big birds allowed either we yeah, yeah.